struggle driver was getting his vodka, so maybe I just needed vodka. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, me and Chase have been friends since I was one and she was born, and then mom, Tori, and Aaron are best friends. And um, I was just saying to Chase, I'm too nice. You're the one who would be saying all the mean stories. <laughs>
husband, for sharing those, because that's what brought us here. Uh, growing up, Ross was always my partner in crime. Now, I'm sure he'd probably tell it different, but I remember it more like my boss in crime. <laughs> my crime boss. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I was an eager employee, ready to do whatever he said. I mean, the guy's so persuasive, he convinced me for years he could control the weather with Pokemon cards. <laughs> I mean, besides his effectual abilities and his quality, too, that he can talk to anybody, any place, for any amount of time. <laughs> uh, Roscoe's also very protective. Even so extreme to go to the point of saying to his best friend, you better not even think about touching my cousin, man. Even though that <laughs> cousin is puking off the deck, in no shape, <laughs> no one's thinking what he's thinking. <laughs> um, Chase, these stories are all evidence that you have someone who will protect you even when you need no protection. Someone to talk to when you feel like you have no one to speak to and a lifetime partner in crime to keep you in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys, to Ross and Chase. So I know uh, Kate's going to say something, and Dion's going to say something, and I'm gonna, am I putting Uncle Jack on the spot, or are you coming up? <laughs> I, are you, were you, I thought, were you, are you coming out of the closet tonight, or? Are you coming out? Oh. Come on. <laughs> Ellen Beck. Ellen Beck. Ellen Beck. I can still, there are certain things that sort of stick with you in life, little moments that change the, way, the direction of your life and where you're going. And I can distinctly remember one day, just before uh, the graduation of Lenny and Aaron, they came up, we were sitting, I came home, and they were sitting on the couch. And uh, Aaron said, Dad, would you mind just sitting for a minute? We have something to talk to you about. So I figured, well, that, that must be something relatively serious. And Aaron said, holding Lenny's hand, Dad, Lenny and I made you something for graduation. <laughs> I, I figure I'm getting a plaque. <laughs> Perhaps a new shirt. <laughs> Hi. Aaron says, we're getting you a little baby girl. <laughs> was I got down surprised nine months later and home came this beautiful little girl. Absolutely. I couldn't believe it's it's amazing how much your heart can hold, how much love your heart can hold. When I first met my wife standing on a street corner. <laughs> I thought she's waving at me because she likes me. And then when our daughter was born, I couldn't believe my heart still wasn't full. And then when Chase came along, I had a heart attack. I had hair before that happened. I was tall. And one of the things that I guess probably another moment in my life that sort of really sort of changed the way I felt about, about life and about uh, particularly about my family. Uh, Chase and Aaron were moving home and with them were coming a couple of dogs, Tracer, the one we talked about, and a cat. So all of a sudden the family that I had, which was just Linda and I, all of a sudden became sort of three, two dogs, three cats, <laughs> myself, Linda was still there. <laughs> they were, I, was, I was moving them in virtually by myself. And at that time I was smoking a lot, drinking quite a bit. <laughs> I'd given up marijuana when I left the 70s. But I was thinking of going back. So I'm sitting on top of a box that was way too heavy for me to move, thinking, Jesus Christ, what the hell is going on? All this freedom I had, and all of a sudden I've got my, my daughter and my granddaughter moving in. This sucks. <laughs> and all of a sudden, around the corner, I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, came this little girl holding her mom's hand. She's got a matching jean jacket on her mind. She's dragging her little stuffed animal. And she says, Mom, I can't move. Can I fly? I don't know what she said. <laughs> she said, well, I can't wait to move in with Mom. Every morning I can wake up. We can tell spook stories. And it'll be great. And then all of a sudden I realized how wonderful having to move home was. And it was more like that for three days. <laughs> the other thing I just wanted to mention, just before I sort of sit down, because I'm starting to ramble, is I am actually responsible for her love of bottles. It wasn't anything to do with Tracy. It wasn't anything to do with her bent for a veterinarian. I didn't realize that she was dyslexic. And I handed her a piece of paper one Sunday when I'd come home from church. <laughs> And it said, must love God. She took it, must love dogs. And thank you for taking my advice and my dogs. I appreciate that. So just two more quick scripts, and then I want to take up the whole night. First of all, I'm amazed at how this venue turned out. So you really be spectacular with the people who sort of put this on, the people who organized it, the people who checked it out. But I'm particularly impressed by Ross and the added touches that he put to it. So I don't know how he did it, and I hope that most of you noticed it. But as I walked up towards the venue and the DJ started the music, Ross somehow had a bunch of Canada geese dancing in the sky. Did you see that? Amazing, amazing. And then, as they started to sort of move sort of through with the riot party, the sun came up. Now, how he did that, I'll never talk down on that road. Just an amazing man. I thought you were great before, until you took her to Edmonton, in which time I didn't like you. <laughs> That's sort of making up for it a little bit. So, congratulations. Welcome to the family. I love you both, but I love Chase <laughs> But it eats everything, including my kids' toys. Oh, 
You're welcome over anytime. Anytime. We've got like several rooms ready for you guys. Um, anyways, I just wanted to say I'm so happy that Ross finally found somebody to make him as happy as I know that he should have been a long time ago. So, anyways, happy marriage, and I hope you guys have a long, happy time. So, David and Wade are my twin brothers. Wade's the baby of the family by several years. It's hard to be the baby. It's hard to be the baby. And Dave's a liar. It never ends. It never ends. Dave is a big, fat liar. Don't even let him fool you for one second. He came to me. So, Leanne was in the hospital for a very long time with Ross. We knew it was a boy because no one else would do that but a boy, make you have that hard time. And so Dave came to my house three times to tell me Ross had arrived. And every single time, like Lucy with the football, I was like, oh, you're kidding. Oh, congratulations. No, I'm just kidding. He's not here yet. So the actual day he arrives, I'm like, whatever. OK, sure. You know, like, I don't believe him. That day, he's got his Callaway boots on and his best jeans, and I'm like, well, maybe he's not lying to me. Actually, maybe Ross is actually here. So I make my way up to the hospital, and Leanne's like, did you meet our boy? And I'm like, so he's really here. He's actually, we actually have a boy. So March 7th, 1991, March the probably, what, 20 years that Dave has lied to me? Yes. I'm still upset about it. I'm still upset about it. Those twins always had the upper hand with me. Ross, put your hand on top of Chase's hand on the table. You put your hand on top of Chase's hand. Chase, let him put his hand on top of your hand. <laughs> That's right. Other way around. You guys are going to do this well. Other way around. Ross puts his hand on top of Chase's hand. There we go. Good job. That's the last time you're going to get the upper hand. <laughs> Things that the widow, what is, what is, uh, Brent's what is Brent saying? They're bossy, they're loud, <laughs> they're feisty. Yeah, welcome to our family. Uh, we're so grateful to have some time with you all tonight to get to know your family. And Ross, you know, everybody's telling stories about how difficult you were and challenging, and you have always heard Mama say. I have never had a problem with Ross. Not <laughs> one problem. Not one time. That little boy, he's so good, he's so easy. I don't know what you all doing, but he's an easy, beautiful boy. Congratulations to you both. Love you so much. Thank you for tonight. Awesome. <laughs> We have one more, and then that's, that's all I know of. So. Okay, FYI, I'm a prior and I'm not funny. <laughs> I wrote these words really too small and I can't see when I'm crying. My phone? It's your So, um, I'm Dion. I'm actually Chase's godmother. And um, I'm just so emotional right now. <laughs> Okay, so I did type some stuff up. Dearest Chase, today we watch as you marry your true love, and it is with awe that I sit here thinking of you and how you've grown into this amazing, beautiful young woman. You have found yourself in your true passion in life. Even as a little girl, you loved animals. Love, love, love all of them. When we would take you to the fall fair, you needed to have and see every animal there, no matter what size or what type. But you have found your true calling with the canines, and this passion has led you not only to an amazing career, to your own business, but also an advocate to those who can't speak for themselves. You have overcome many obstacles, but persevered through it all, always being true to yourself and fighting for what you believe in. You have come a long way from that Buddha baby 
<laughs> and grown into this beautiful, strong, compassionate woman before us today. My little Chaseru, I know I don't often get to see or talk to you, but I am so unbelievably proud of you and who you have become. Watching you today take this next step in your life, seeing your smile and the joy in your eyes just warms my heart and soul. I wish you a lifetime of love and happiness. I love you, Jesus. Okay, so we just have one final speech, and then I think we're going to invite Jason Ross to come up and say a couple words, okay? Emily?
I'm not like overly good with names. I've been meeting, you know, just a ton of people that I've, I've seen their faces. I recognize faces, right? Um, obviously, a big thanks to my parents and Chase's parents and Jen, everybody that you know helped us out and put this together. But I'd also like to extend like the huge thank you to the group of people who came down today, and like it was just chaos. We're trying to figure out how to get everything decorated, and there were some people who really like stepped up and just made this room right, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, I'd also like to extend a huge thanks out to the chef. He did an awesome job. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> It was kind of like a disconnect with us. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I gave him the wrong date, but we're not going to point any fingers. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he came together like last minute. He had, you know, a day to prep and was like, holy crap. And I hope you guys enjoyed your food because yeah. I mean, he did a fantastic day. So I really like to thank him. Um, I'd also like to thank Aiden and Colby for emceeing the wedding and stuff. Um, Aiden's like nerves of steel. When I did cams, I was ready to faint. So, I had a lot of booze to get me up there and smooth, right? So, so did Aiden. awesome job, guys. You guys are doing an amazing job. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody has fun and enjoys their night. And thank you all. Yes, and our bartender. She's taking care of 100 people. Sherry was taking care of 100 people by herself. That was amazing. Yeah, I'll take five, right? Yeah, I'll take five. Take five. Take five. Yeah. Take five. Yeah.